Welcome back to MDG Media's coverage of the Sierra Vuori Challenge, ninth stop on the Euro Tour. We got an exciting second round, front nine action from the MPO lead card, Andrew Gum and Elias Lukonen at it again. What's up, Andrew? What's up, viewers? Nice to be here once again on a tournament that I was not personally playing, but we will get more insight from Andrew and uh, let's have a look at the players first. Jona Heinonen, very solid first round. We saw him on feature called on that first round. He shot a solid 11 under, shooting the course record. We'll have to see whether that stays the course record or will be broken. Yeah, he's in of a sponsor from Kerava. We also have Nestor Itukonen, 10-12 rated player from Mikkeli. Sponsored by Latitude 64. Another exciting Finnish player. Yeah, and here's possibly a new name for some of our viewers, Jasper Heino. One of the best throwers of the disc in Finland. He's always consistently near the top spots in strokes gained for driving on U-Disc statistics. So it will be interesting to see how well he throws that disc today. Yeah, it's a new face for me. I've heard the name a few times. Uh, this is a familiar face. We have Teemu Lampainen from Moscow, over there in the Turku area. He's sponsored by Latitude 64, 1019 rated. Here we are on hole one, tough par four, 234 meters. Pretty straight shot moving to the left a little bit at the end here off the tee. OB lining the left and right sides. Plenty of space, but uh, can definitely be be an issue when you're trying to get a big drive. You know, you can often leave it left or right. And then you see here the second shot with a pretty well guarded green, a few beautiful birch trees here, right on the circle's edge and basket right there. Kind of a nice little distance check here on hole one as these players are not going for the biggest distance line, but rather try to throw that straight to stable distance driver. Just try to hammer, hammer it flat down there and get that small left finish. We'll get a good comparison of how far the discs are flying for each player. Looking good from Yona. Skipping right in the middle. Here's one guy that has some high potential on the course. We have seen it throughout the season. When he's playing good, he's almost unbeatable. And throwing another great shot here. Yeah, he's been in the mix a few times this year. It's going to be pretty interesting to see whether Jasper shows any signs of nerves as he's nothing new to these lead card situations, but we haven't really seen him on video. So he will have to keep those possible nerves in check, but able to do that on that first shot. Yeah, he got off the tee clean. Challenging the left side. Needs to stay right, but unfortunately, uh -huh. not gonna be the case for Temu. He's gonna have to start off with an OB stroke on the first hole. And not only the OB, he's also gonna have to take that approach a little bit further back than the other guys. 
pretty tough up and down from here. It's going to take something special. Looking good, though. Just catches some late guardian trees there. You'll have a circle's edge look. Might be obstructed, though. Yeah, it looks pretty obstructed for sure. And everybody else pretty much in great position here. Just got to miss those couple of trees at the end. It looks like Joanna are not quite able to get through. Still should have a long look. That worked out well. Skips up to about five meters. This is a pretty big drive from Nestor. Able to go with just slow overstable disc Kaiser and damn, almost skipping it in the basket there. That's a nice way to start. Yeah, perfectly played there. Huge distance off the tee and then a nice touchy approach. Almost ringing it up. Be a cool eagle. Oh, nice. Found a window and saves the par. Super good par save. And you want to have for the birdie. Solid putt. That's kind of his strength for putting is that inside the circle range. Super consistent from inside the circle. And uh, that's a nice birdie on a hole that I was actually playing as the fourth most difficult hole on the course, averaging 4.23, so well over par. Nice birdie to get. Oh. Just kind of flops out the backside. Maybe a little bit of those nerves you were talking about coming into play there on that short putt. Pretty tough to see. Couple pars, yeah. That's pretty tough miss to see from Jasper on the first hole, but he will have plenty of chances to get that together. What's up on hole two? Hole two is just a pipe dream. Beautiful disc golf hole right down the middle. Uh, yeah, 97 meters. Pretty tight, but plenty of space really to just lay something down there and hope it sticks close. There's some kind of it kind of narrows a little bit here at the very end of the hole. There's a little bit of a, a, a tree that kind of tightens the gap even more near the basket, but just throw, it, throw a straight shot. It should be pretty good. We saw Yona throw... Might be slightly uphill. We saw Yona throw a beautiful line here on, on the first round. This time not quite, but... Getting possibly one of the best kicks you could ask for with that bit of an early release. Still gonna have a putt from that edge of the circle range. Yeah, great result. That's not too bad either for an early hit. Gets up there, I think it's circle two. And Jasper, his stroke or his drive is super suitable for this hole and that was a nice looking line just not able to keep it on the fairway that's gonna be back to back pass for him a little bit early on the inside there not sure where it kicked but probably have to scramble Nice pitch up there, no trouble with this. It looks like a bit of an elevated basket. Is there? Um, is the elevation coming into play on this one? It, it's it's higher than normal. Yeah, it's a little bit higher. It's like maybe a, about a half a meter longer or taller than most baskets, and kind of up on a little bit of a rock. So yeah, the green itself is slightly elevated, and the basket also elevated just slightly. So it can, it can come into play for sure. Not for Yona though, as he started two under through two. Perfect start for him. So far, so par for Tamo. Nestori as well. And 
one. Oh no, yeah. Jasper, Pars, and Nestori. That birdie in a par, so. Yeah, interestingly enough, that hole was uh, actually less birdie than hole one, but still playing significantly easier right around par average. Yeah, hole three, par four, 176 meters. Got to try to push past these skinny birch trees into this landing zone here where it turns pretty hard left to right. And then your second shot should be a pretty routine up if you hit the drive nice. There is this one thing to avoid on the green, that nice little rock with a couple trees coming up out of it. Beautiful feature there. Definitely one you want to get here. Yeah, maybe we could but get the same. there's a lot of OB, so, yeah. Yeah, definitely a hole that does have some bogey potential. Has 26% of the field getting a bogey or more. But Jona here, this looks like a Ooh. beautiful, uh, never even being really close to any trees. And he's going to have just the pitch upshot to the basket there. That was perfect. Trusted that slight turnover all the way. Hanging it wide. Letting it work all the way up there. It's looking good as well, but it catches one of the branches. Kicks down into a little bit of a, a creek there. You know, he'll get casual relief from that. Yeah, seems like the forehand has some great distance potential here, as in round one we saw Yalte, one of our feature card players, getting all the way to jump at range here. But those two forehands not quite doing the same. I suppose it's okay, there are only still a pretty short approach left. Yeah, you don't need too much distance off the tee, you just want to be in a decent place where you can shape something up to the green. Even this is pretty much perfect right there, straight shot. Nestor here has to take a bit more of an extreme angle than he would probably prefer, but what a result there. Very comfortable with that high forehand high there shape. And he's somebody that has really brought his forehand into a new level for this season. He wasn't really known for being a forehand player before, but this year his forehand has been amazing in almost all tournaments. Seeing some pretty good approaches. Another one right there, just outside the bullseye. Yona puts his just outside the bullseye, looking for a turkey start. Nice chance here for even a possible star frame. We saw that star frame in round one. And uh, everybody inside the circle here. Jasper with a bit of a tester from 9 meters. We get a good look to see where those nerves are at. And looks like they're non-existent as he has made a good one. Perfectly in the middle. Nice pot there. Another one looking like a star frame here. As you could kind of expect from a lead card, I guess. One of the easier ones. Still good. Yeah, good to get. Surprisingly, this hole was actually playing above par on average. But that is probably because the field does include many uh, skill levels and... Obviously, for these top players, it's a pretty simple hole, but for the rest of the field, it might not be exactly that. Exactly, yeah, that's, that's how it is. Hole four, par three, 116 meters, early gap, moving right to left, and then a late gap here. Pretty well guarded basket. There is, there is a, you know, Pretty clean line right here where the drone's coming through, but pretty hard to nail it all the way up to the basket. Blind shot off the tee. D 
disc choice here is going to be pretty interesting because we did see some pretty straight fairway drivers thrown by the players in round one and looks like Jonas is doing the same and that's a beautiful oh, yeah. line there wow perfect slightest wow. bit of flip up in that middle part of the flight and just matching the fairway perfectly yeah perfect drive from Jonas there there was a, a pretty strong right to left crosswind on this one today you can sort of hear it coming off the lake and there there you see the trees swaying in the back kind of kind of a helping wind though i guess you can almost disc down and let it uh let the wind sort of push it would you say overall that uh wind was making the course play more difficult or was it kind of not really coming into play that much um, it was definitely windier than day one, but then it was sunny as well, so um, I don't know, it was, I, I guess I think it would make it pay, play a little more difficult, but it wasn't, it's pretty sheltered, especially in this midsection of the course where it's pretty deep woods. Wow, that's a nice kick there. Then with uh, another almost park job there, and... We kind of missed Jasper's drive there, but almost acing the basket. Both Nestor and Jasper giving some good speed on the disc. Not really paying the price there, as there's some uh, pretty good shrubbery on the bottom of the green, not really allowing for much skips. Yeah, there's a ton of blueberry bushes everywhere. They sort of gobble everything up. Not quite there I guess for they're actually called Bill. No. Sorry. <laughs> yeah. I was gonna they're actually Bill Berries, the, the little small blueberries. Euro European ones. Oh, interesting. Never knew that. I guess the English transla translations are a bit more difficult there. And uh, that's a couple of nice yeah, birdies from the card there. Both Nestori and Temu. And uh Yona still waiting for his tap in. Very well played here from the card. Absolute park job from Yona. Moving to four under through four. That's flaming. The J, it's kind of like a companion disc to the rock, not quite as overstable. So it's more point and shoot than the rock is, but it's still got really good torque resistance and, and it plays really well in the wind and you can throw it sidearm. Yeah, big thanks to Innova for sponsoring this event. Got really cool players packed, big payouts. They keep innovating and helping to grow the sport, so. Good on them. Hole five, par three, 150 meters. Quite a bonus birdie here. There is an early Mando on the right side, keeping you honest down the middle. OB on the right and this tennis court that you see on the left. And then the basket's just tucked right behind the tennis court with OB behind it and on the deep left side as well. So very tricky hole. Yeah, averaging very tricky as well being the most difficult hole of course with 3.44 average so very high and Jona here is playing a similar shot to round one where he's turning it over slightly to the right playing kind of away from that tennis court this time not quite able to put it to the edge of the circle but he's still gonna have a long look from that long side of circle two it's an aggressive shot from Nestor can it get uh, no, that's in the tennis court. Yeah, I haven't pretty. seen any of those high lines get all the way to the basket yet. Yeah, that seems seems to be the miss with that high line. We I think we saw a similar shot in round one, where somebody was trying to go for that high line, possibly trying to get some more glide on the disc, but just not able to get the turn. That's a pretty good result there. Circle two look on this one's just fine. Just 
Looks good if it can stable up. No, it's not coming back. Well, safe anyway. Maybe just outside circle two. Pin high. Yeah, pretty. Such a long hole. I feel like it's, uh, or it seems difficult to get both the distance and the angle on it without risking that tennis court. Averaging almost a half stroke over par, so only 5% of the field able to get the birdie. Pretty good bid there from Yona. Yeah, Yona, from, uh, who was actually one of the people that got the birdie yesterday. But now he's going to be still four under through five, matching that start from the first round. And Tim, wow, almost able to make it from far side of circle two. And this is probably gonna be a pretty funny line from Nestre. Having to go around or yeah, over the, the post. Heiser putt there. Doesn't get it to drop, but stays pretty close here for an easy cleanup. So yeah, only five birdies on the day. Three of them from circle one. And we had a park job from Ronnie Ronkanen. So nice park job. Yeah, not really surprising though, as he loves that slight Anheuser flex shape that seems to suit this hole just perfectly. And the guy's got a lot of power too. But no birdies for our card here. A little bit surprising, because these are really the players that would birdie the hole on the lead card if somebody would. Yeah, and that bogey there from Nestori, slowing his pace down. See if he can bounce back here on hole six. It's a nice par three, 104 meters. Main gap here on the right side where the drone's flying. Pretty tight too. You got these kind of like cluster of juniper trees here. Then a few other trees on the left. You want to try to get it to skip maybe, or if you got the power to f do it on the fly, just get it to fade up towards the basket right here. There's also a left side line there for the forehand or possibly a turnover, but a little bit lower percentage with the tighter gap. Yona threw a beautiful shot here yesterday and once again, this is looking very nice. A little bit lower though, but that's still well Works in the out. circle. Such a good line. He's got this hole down just perfect. A little bit wide, but probably in circle two. Oh, that oh, was looking so good. Yeah, I believe if it, if it had just gotten around that last corner tree, would have been so close. And Nestor here. That's a nice shot. He's going to be just on the oh, edge yeah. of the bullseye. Wow. Well done there, going with a nice stable mid-range. I believe a trust from latitude 64. Yeah, great move on that. Skips up to the bullseye there. This hole kind of showing why it's playing well below par, almost a quarter of a stroke on the par average, as even the slightly errant drives have no trouble getting to the basket up and down for that par. Yeah, there's really only a few things that can go wrong to put you in trouble for a bogey here. It's either like a really bad miss right into the middle trees early, or if you push it a um, little bit too straight and don't get the fade. There's some really thick Norwegian spruce tree here that you can see just uh, over to the right side there. And if you get caught up in there, it's pretty hard to even punch out sometimes, but otherwise it's pretty smooth sailing on that one. Let's 
Hole 7, another par 3, 113 meters. Really nice shape on this one, moving left to right a little bit at the very end after a long straight shot here. And it's uh, uphill a fair bit in the end there with an elevated basket, so. Also pretty well guarded basket. There's a few trees that really make the entrance into the green pretty touchy. Yeah, it's another hole that's very easy to par and pretty difficult to bogey. So let's see. Birdie here goes a long way and Jona this time putting some good height on the disc. Last round we saw him do that mistake of putting it too low. But this time doing a different mistake of turning it over to the right. But he's still going to have a look there from circle two. Yep. This seems to fight through pretty much all the way up there. Oh, ouch. That's a rough kick. Yeah, pretty smooth looking forehand there from Temo, but just getting too much turn on it. And Jasper, wow, just look at this line. Incredible oh. shot. Wow. That drifted beautifully. Went a little bit long in the basket. Pretty much a perfect drive there. Best I've seen. Yeah, super nice. And Temo here, trying to get up and down. Still going to have some putting left to do there. Tough position. Esther gives that one a chance. Ends up just outside the bullseye. Mm. Bit soft, low left putt there. Little hesitant looking putt there from Temu. Maybe worried about that elevated basket, but not Jona though. As he's made a nice one from just outside the circle. His putt is looking solid. Really solid. Everything's looking solid. Six down through seven here. He's got a healthy lead. In of a sponsored player here at their event. They must be happy and proud. Off to the races here. And Jasper there, unfortunately, already the second inside the circle miss of the round. And Temo there, good make for the bogey. Deep in the woods here on hole eight, par three, 90 meters. Quite a bit downhill, pretty tight gap. Very narrow entrance to the green here at the very end of it. You can see where it really pinches down with these two trees kind of with the one on the right leaning towards the left. You gotta kind of peer it through there or get a little bit lucky from some other way. And then you don't wanna overshoot it either or you get caught up behind some stuff. Touchy downhill shot here. Fun one. Yeah, touchy for most players, but Jonah is going for this huge hyzer through the gap in the trees. Kind of taking the most of the flight out of the play and just trying to play down to the green. And couldn't really see where that one landed, but you would have to uh, uh, just assume that it's somewhere within putting range. Yeah, I'm guessing so. Yesterday he put it really close and I mean, if you if you have the power and the control on that hyzer, that's the way to go, I guess. You know, you, not too much can go wrong with that one. It's going to smash down somewhere near the green, right? Yeah, for sure. But everybody else, or at least both Jasper and Nestor, going for that traditional line. And you can just see why some people go over the top. That line is so tight at the end. It sure is.
Mä mun mielestä heidän vielä. Mä ajattelin, että mä heidän silleen vähän flätimpänä. Third easiest hole on the course, 2.72 average, so 43% able to get that birdie. Come on, There's one. Pretty putt. Okay. Yeah, that's the nestery we like to see, and well, at least for me, that's the nestery I know. Just an incredible putter. Has a super good stroke. Just that nice stab at the end, even with keeping the arm mostly pretty straight. Very consistent putting style, and when his putt is on, he's one of the best putters you can find. Some real nice wrist pop there. Perfect aim. That one drops in. Corner pocket. Nice birdie to get after a bit of a slow start. Not really. You know, these are no gimmies, you know. Each of these holes have their own challenges, but kind of the course as a whole, definitely playing on the softer side. It's actually averaging below par for the entire course, which I feel like it's pretty rare on these international tour level courses. Yeah, definitely one you want to get, but as you can see, it's not easy. I mean, you have to really get everything just right off the tee to, to get close to the basket. Otherwise, you see, you do see a lot of circle two looks, so nice to see people sniping them in from longer range on this lead card. Couple pars there for Jon and Temu. Very interesting hole nine, par four, 160 meters. Really tight tee shot here. You want to, I guess, move a little bit left if you can. And then it, it goes a little bit down and back uphill. You can't really quite see it, but it's pretty uphill right here. And then it continues to move down this tight grouping of trees and then bends again to the left and back straight, or to the right and then back straight, sorry. So it's a very demanding, deep woods hole. Beautiful view behind the tee of the lake. This seems to be a good way to do it if you have that kind of power. Just take the trees out of the equation and try to spike it in on the fairway, but that could be in a really bad place. The rough is seriously rough here. Yeah, a lot of distance on that one though. Nestor getting it pretty far down the fairway. So possibly even the scramble gonna be a better option than uh, trying to play the fairway at the beginning. Yeah, yeah I guarantee you more distance at least. Position's pretty hard to guarantee on this one anyway. You can. That might have gone a little bit right side, but pretty good chance to scramble. Yeah, it looks like he's having to go with just a jump putt there. Kind of tough, mm -hmm. tough thing to do, even on a short hole like this. Not really able to get that distance through the first two shots. Yeah, on this one, you just want to keep progressing as much as you can with each shot. Hope it works out. This Oh, it was looking good, but catches some late trees. He might be almost in circle two, though. I think most of our viewers can probably relate to my experience, as I haven't played this course. And looking from the camera view, it's really, really hard to tell where's the... Where's the route that these players are supposed to take? But from here, Temo already has it's a nice even, shot there. It's, yeah, it's not even a whole lot easier to figure it out down there on the ground, to be honest. <laughs> it's that kind of hole. A 
nobody really having huge trouble getting down the fairway although nobody's really done it cleanly but I think correct me if I'm wrong but that's probably the theme on this one you know just try to get it down there possibly hit a couple of trees but not more but that's a nice birdie there able to scramble from that long right, drive right. on the left left side yeah Stanislas Aman from Austria told me that his card star framed this hole which is mind-blowing to me so great on those guys yeah, that's pretty crazy. I think there was one one circle, two putt, and the rest were inside the circle. So very well played from that whole card. As you can see, even this lead card struggling to get the birdies. Uh, Nestor able to get it done, though. And he's charging. He's doing his best to keep up with Yona. Just two strokes back. Yeah. Looked like Yona was going to leave everybody in his, in the dust there, but... Nestor, he's not going to let him get too far out of reach. Yeah, for sure not. It looks like we did get some good scoring separation as there's five strokes of different inside or difference inside the top ten for only this round for the front nine. Of course, Jona and Nestor at first, but then Mikael Hame, Onni Ruusonen, and Miro yeah. Ryhänen and Teemu Talikan, and just right there, they're going to be challenging that fourth lead card spot for tomorrow. Thank you guys for watching and thank you, Andrew, for doing commentary with me. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Pleasure. Looking forward to seeing the back nine on this beautiful holiday resort property in Sierra Vuori. Make sure you come on back and check it out and also consider the Patreon there. Great way to support MDG family.